Hi, I'm Lisa Orman. I'm out here in Central Park today. We are part of a group called Central Park Advocates. We are recreational users of the park and also people who use the park for transportation. We're walkers, bikers, rollerbladers, scooter riders, and we are out here asking the park and the city to look at design instead of enforcement. We think there are ways to make the park much safer and to foster a culture of safety and respect for everyone in the park. What we want is safe routes through the park that will encourage cyclists, ordinary commuter cyclists, to go through Central Park, feel they're safe. Getting in and out of the parks efficiently and safely during COVID requires shared public space. And we've been doing it here for years. Columbus Circle, the heart of Manhattan, the entrance, the gateway to Central Park. This is a conflict zone between pedestrians and bicyclists who are coming around a blind curve after having gone up steep hills and they see this wide open flat area and they tend to uh, put on the speed and it would be very hard for anybody to, to stop in time to avoid a pedestrian. We could replace this roadway with a ribbon of three distinct colors on the, on the pavement. First one's for people using their feet, people who jog and people who walk. The next two, two could be people who use wheels, and there's a whole range of wheels that people use. And it would be fun. Imagine a six mile loop of a, a ribbon of three different colors with some great signage. It would transform the way that people enjoy this park. Well, we're at 106th Street and the Loop Drive, uh, you know, leading out to Central Park West. This is the Parks Department pavement marker for a shared path. I don't know how that's supposed to indicate that it's a shared path. I don't know how people are supposed to know this. If you're a tourist, if you're a city bike rider that might not be familiar with the park, there's no way you would know that's a shared path. Uh, this path uh, could use some repaving. It's, it's quite um, messed up and a little bit hilly, but the signage can be improved because we find that sometimes pedestrians are caught off guard because they don't recognize that it's a path that cyclists are allowed on. We need a park that welcomes everybody, the cyclist and the pedestrian. In fact, if the park doesn't work for everyone who is enjoying non-motorized transportation, the park won't work for anyone. There are no safe cycling routes through Central Park from east to west or west to east, except at 72nd Street, which is a heavily used, really magnificent route. But what we see now is dangerous. What we want is safe routes through the park that will encourage cyclists, ordinary commuter cyclists, to go through Central Park, feel they're safe. There are very few options for crossing. Uh, so I live on the east side, but I work on the west side and I run a lot of errands on both sides. And so I do spend a lot of time crossing the park and the 72nd Street and 102nd Street transverses are nice, but there's really nothing in between. And I don't feel safe enough biking through the transverses underneath the park that are designed by cars because there's just not enough of a shoulder. I have been stopped by the police as I've ridden on the pathways to get across town because that's the only way to do it and you're not supposed to do it. And I, I confess that I do it anyway, very carefully. I'm greeted by signs that say, dismount and walk. So to get across the park, I'm expected to get off my bike and walk the entire uh, cross-town distance of the park. Poor Dr. Kammerman, who was killed navigating the transverse back in December 2019, had no safe cross-town route to get over to Mount Sinai Hospital. And he could be alive today had he had a safe park-to-park -park passage through 95th Street. The park drive used to be a lot twistier. And then over time, as the car was introduced to Central Park and Robert Moses became parks commissioner, the park was redesigned to accommodate cars. The park didn't originally have traffic lights. And if you think about it, it's actually crazy that a park would have traffic lights. After decades and decades of fighting, the city has finally banned cars from the loop drive. And now we have an opportunity 
to think about the design of the Loop Drive and of Central Park and the crossings. There are 47 lights in the park, one every 674 feet on average. This is one of them. There is no need for them. They were put there for uh, vehicles weighing 3,000 pounds and going 30 miles an hour that required a long stopping distance. Uh, cyclists do not need that. It would make much more sense to devise another system, perhaps making the lights flashing yellow. We even have markings that tell us a whole lane on the East and West Drive is reserved for cars. How can that be? How can that work when we have increasing numbers of cyclists and pedestrians? We need to radically rethink this park's design. And that's something we can all get behind. And the thing with non-compliance and changing public behaviors is, is instead of enforcing rules that no longer apply to the users, you change the rules. And enforcement should also be sensible where someone who is cutting in front of a pedestrian will get a ticket, not just somebody who goes through a dead red light. If you look at the Central Park Precinct data on crashes between bicycle riders and pedestrians, for the last year, 2018, the last year data is available, there were only nine crashes. And that's down from a high of 34 crashes in 2014, which was the highest year since they started taking records. This intersection behind me is a very challenging intersection in Central Park. You have bikes that are coming around a corner and down a hill, so there's low visibility and they're coming at high speed, and you also have a lot of people crossing here. And what you have right now doesn't work well. This is so dumb for a couple of reasons. One, cyclists are going to want to see how fast they can go down the hill and uh, measure their speed. And uh, the other thing is they're taking their eyes off the road when they're looking at the sign. So they're not looking at the pedestrian crossing. We have three lanes here. Rather than have them in boring, simple, whatever this color is, the tarmac, the pavement, we can have three different lanes of three different colors. The first lane here could be for people walking and jogging. The next two lanes could be a far, slow and fast with different colors for people on wheels, bikes, scooters, skateboards, monos, whatever you want to. People have tons of ways of getting around here. I've been standing here for a while and the fastest cyclist has been going uh, at the most 24, 25 miles an hour. Now the, the police department is notorious for allowing drivers at least six miles over the posted speed limit before they will even pull somebody over, much less issue a summons. So um, by that logic, they would never pull a cyclist over. So. And automatic tickets don't start till 11 miles an hour, right? That's or right, driver, that's right, <laughs> if it's a speed camera, yeah. So in 2010, a group of activists met with the Parks Department, then under Adrian Benepe, and the Central Park Conservancy, who all supported six crosstown bicycle shared pedestrian routes through Central Park. Of those, we got two, two out of six. This little used path on 85th Street hugs the transverse, goes right past the Central Park police precinct in an unused space. And we're gonna see that in a minute. I love Central Park. I love to jog in Central Park. I love to cycle in Central Park. Central Park has given me much pleasure, but one day Central Park gave me sorrow. On August 3rd, 2014, 
my beloved husband of 47 years, Irving Schachter, ride, a bicycle ride leader extraordinaire, runner, was running on the East Drive, a 17-year-old cyclist, veered at speed into the pedestrian lane, collided with him, and it was all over. In the wake of that tragedy, I asked myself, how can we have an even safer Central Park? Central Park is filled with people commuting, recreating, and generally it is safe, but we need a park that works for everybody. Some people are trying to make problems of Central Park seem to be us against them. The predator cyclists against the pedestrians, the young people against the old people. And for those groups, the answer is police enforcement. But although I am at least as much a victim of the very rare cyclist caused fat fatality as anyone, I see that that isn't what's going to work. We need a park that welcomes everybody, the cyclist and the pedestrian. In fact, if the park doesn't work for everyone who is enjoying non-motorized transportation, the park won't work for anyone. A park that works for cyclists is a park that will work for all kinds of pedestrians park that works for pedestrians will work for cyclists. We say this is a car-free park, and yet the current design is extremely car-centric. We even have markings that tell us a whole lane on the East and West Drive is reserved for cars. How can that be? How can that work? when we have increasing numbers of cyclists and pedestrians. We need to radically rethink this park's design, and that's something we can all get behind. Older people, younger people, pedestrians, cyclists, skaters, scooter users, all of us, we the people, are going to redesign and reclaim our Central Park.